Flux has been revamped for Unity 5, and I'm going to show some of the changes in the basic workflow. Now to create a sequence, click on the drop-down and select Create New Sequence. The first thing you'll notice is that now we have a new element in the sequence. This is called a container, and is identified by this folder icon on its header. Containers allow you to group timelines. It is especially useful if you're working on complex sequences, and you may want to group all the VFX or all the characters in one place. That way, the people working in it know exactly where to look, and if they aren't interested, they can just collapse them. You can set the text and the color of the container in the inspector. There's a way to create default containers, which we'll talk about in another video. To add more containers, simply click on the Add Container button next to the drop-down. To remove them, right-click on the header and choose Delete. Besides containers, using Flux is the same as before. You just drag the object you want to act upon onto a container and it will create the timeline. With this timeline you can start adding tracks that will affect the object, but before doing that let's make our sequence 4 seconds long. In this sequence we want to make the cube change color from blue to red and then back to blue again. To add a track that changes the color over time, choose Render Twin Color. You can now set the properties of this event in the inspector. Let's make it go from blue to red. If you scrub, you'll be able to preview how the event will affect your object. Like in previous versions of Flux, you can resize these events and move them around in both Editor and the Inspector window. Now that we have it going from blue to red, we want to make it go back from red to blue. To add a new event, just scrub to the point you want to add it and press K. Make sure the color goes from red to blue. Now let's add some simple movement to this cube. Choose Transform, Twin Position. We want to make it go up while changing to red, and come down when going back to blue. Another way to add events is to right-click on an empty space of the track. One new feature in version 2 is that you can turn off tracks. To do so, turn off Enabled in the inspector of the track. When tracks are disabled, they get grayed out and they don't get evaluated. Now that our sequence is finished, we just need to make sure that it will play automatically. To do so, select it and enable Play on Start.